This is not our radio. This is your radio. This is Dark City Radio. This is your Dark City. 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 This is your Dark City, this is your dark city Radio. Welcome to Be Decoded on the Arc City Radio. I'm Chaba, your host for the next hour, Bob at the Control. Our subject tonight, Pharaoh show Egypt in present time, Octagon, Switzerland. And uh, there is no one other than this man who could talk about this. Sean Ross, are you there? I'm here, bro. How are you? I was surviving under under the Swiss terror of Octagon. I see. Uh, what is what is going on? Well, it's a very long story. Um, Switzerland is a dictatorship. They financed Adolf Hitler. There was this Swiss general. He was uh, his name was uh, Ulrich Villa. And they started to finance Adolf from 1923 on. I have some pictures of that when he was in Zurich. Uh, on the first, the first time they financed him with about half a million dollar worth today. Uh, you can see the pictures in my channel. So if you if you if you type the Pharaoh show, then my channel Gure will uh, come out. Yeah, and yeah. they um, can also so check on the on the website. On the website, they just can click on the Bobby, uh, BD Code show from tonight, and there is all the links to uh, uh, Sean's uh, um, YouTube channels, where all the different uh, videos that uh, Sean is talking about uh, are just there to click. Go, oh, go exactly. ahead, that's, oh, that's a very good idea, Java. Yeah, so this is a dictatorship. That's why Switzerland was never in any war, not the 30-year war, not the Second World War, not the First World War. They financed it all. And why? Because this country was founded by the Templars. And the last of the Crusades happened in the year 1291. And Aachen, in the north of Israel now, in French, is called Saint-Jean-d'Acre. Uh, Aachen fell on... May 18th, 1291. Only two and a half months later, the time to get back on horseback or on foot in those days, they founded Switzerland. And afterwards, the Templars, so they founded Switzerland on August 1st, 1291, which is still being celebrated uh, in Switzerland every year with a lot of uh, fireworks and uh, they burn a heap of uh, wood which is symbolizing uh, the burning of Europeans and the burning like in Auschwitz and the burning of the witches. They like to burn people here. At the moment, actually, they're, uh, they're constructing three concentration camps in Switzerland. One in the German-speaking part, one in the French-speaking part, and one in the Italian-speaking part. And, and um, you, you know where they are? Um, no, I don't know where they are. That's probably kept secret, but... Maybe you can find it out. But at yeah. least I, I know that in each um, linguist, linguistic area of Switzerland, well, there's a fourth linguistic area where they don't, where they won't have any. Yeah. They don't. They don't know prison uh, in, in the in the Rätoromanisch speaking place. <laughs> yeah, they, it's a well, It's not a place where people go through, I suppose. Or enter Switzerland. It's very mountainous area. Yeah. So mm. after they founded Switzerland, the Templars did. They uh, they were the banks of Europe. And ich bin hier am Radio. Was machst du denn? Halt mal, geh raus. Excuse me. So excuse me for that. I've got two boys here, and well, they just can't. Be quiet. So, yeah, so they founded Switzerland, and they were the uh, the banks in Europe. 
Um, so it's for hundreds of years. They finance all the wars. They lend money to the French king and other kings, the Prussian kings and um, emperors. So it's very obvious that the, the, the famous Templar's treasure uh, went to Switzerland. And where did they got it from? Well, the aim of the, the Crusades actually was not Jerusalem. Um, the aim was the pyramid and the uh, the pharaohs and the uh, the pharaonic treasures, and that's where they got the um, the famous Templar's treasure from. And we all know there's a lot of gold and, and Nazi gold. It's all hiding here in Switzerland, in their caves, in their banks. And um, so, why did these Templars actually? Why did they? Um, get it from the, the pyramid. Well, I'll tell you why. The Templars, they were, not, they were no monks. I mean, a monk doesn't do these sort of things, kill people and, and pillage and, and rob and murder and, and black magic and, and everything. So, um, yeah, they, um, they were no monks, they were, in fact, they were the aristocracy. But because they were only the, um, not the first son, there's a rule within the aristocracy and the nobility. They're only the first son, he gets everything. The land, the castle, the uh, concubines, the, uh, the power, everything. The sheep, mm. the us, the, the slaves. And the second or third sons, and I don't even talk about the, uh, the girls, their daughters, they didn't get anything, anything at all. And um, so there was a tradition for second and third sons to go into a monastery. And there they finally um, got organized and said, well, we are um, aristocrats as well, and we're going to make our own kingdom. But for a kingdom, you need a lot of money. So mm. they okay. can you say what the, the, the word aristocrat means? Yeah, I'll do that later. Yeah. So you need a lot of money for a um, for a kingdom. So they told mm. th they already knew they were going to the pyramids. So they told the, Euro the Europeans. They told them, "Wow, well, listen, there's this holy city. It's called Jerusalem. It's about a couple of months walking." And um, you go to heaven if you come with us, and we have to save Jesus there with his grandmother and everything. They're, they're living there, and uh, it's it's actually the same like the um, the media, the mainstream media told us, and the Yanks that uh, Saddam Hussein is having weapons of mass destruction. All the other lies, like 9/11. Mm. So this is how they had a um, a military backup of the Europeans. And as soon as the, the Templars, they had their Templars treasure, they betrayed all the uh, European crusaders from England, France, and Germany, and the north of Europe. They betrayed them to Saladin, the, uh, the Muslim leader, who was one of them, of course. And they all got butchered. And then these Templars, they could easily go to Switzerland and have their... Uh, have their Swiss utopia going on, you know. Uh, so why did they go to the pyramids? Because the aristocracy, actually, they're all pharaonic. So first there were the pharaohs, and it's written in the Bible that the, uh, the pharaoh and its army, they disappeared in the sea. But of course the sea never opens. There's, there's no such thing. That means that they disappeared in the sea of peoples. They are within us. They are everywhere. And they're so mixed with us that we can't even recognize them anymore. And they're lying and they're everywhere in key positions. So these uh, pharaohs, they never disappeared. And they became eventually the aristocracy. Um, I'm coming to your question now. The word aristocracy in pharaonic it's first an A, and then there's R-I. So the A in pharaonic, it means uh, big or pregnant. Well, in this case, pregnant. And ri, a ri, stockracy, aristocracy. Ri, it means the sun, like the sun god, re or ra, 
Amun-Ra. So Ari, it means pregnant son. So that means they were born out of the sun. They came from somewhere else, see? And that's why in the Second World War, they were the same buggers, you know? The, 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 I call them the Nazi Templars, with their base Switzerland. And these Nazi Templars, they started talking about the Aryans. And it's the same two words which are demotic or pharaonic. Demotic is, <coughs> sorry. Demotic is the is the written way of the uh, of the Pharaonic language. It looks a bit like Arabic. They have a lot of in common actually with Hebrew and Arabic, the Pharaonic language, because you only write the the consonants in these three and languages. W w where and, you uh, can so find that? Uh, Aryan, it's it's R, uh, it's pregnant like an aristocracy, and Ri is again the the um, uh, the sun. So Aryan means actually the, the very same thing as aristocracy. Yeah. And where you can find the, the language of uh, pharaonic language? Oh, you have to study that. People is, study is that at university like for years and um, then... But the name is pharaonic, pharaonic language. Yeah, it's uh, demotic. That's uh, D-E-M-O-T-I-C, demotic. That's okay. the written... Because the uh, the hieroglyph is only for the uh, for the priest actually for the um, for the temples. It's a temple writing. So they ha they mm. also had uh, um, uh, two other ways of writing, and one of them is the demotic writing. It looks a bit like um, like Arabic, well, you know, from sight, like. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they have a lot in common, like writing only the consonants. Like, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting thing, you know, there's the word Christ, which is, um, which is Greek. And the word Christ means exactly the same thing as the Hebrew uh, counterpart or the equivalent for Christ, which is um, um, Messiah. And uh -huh. as the uh, Messiah also means um, uh, Christ, exactly the same uh, meaning. Uh, what does Christ mean, or Messiah? That means the anointed one, because there was a tradition uh, with Hebrew kings that their feet were um, uh, massaged by some people with uh, some olive oil or something. And the pharaohs, they had the same thing going on. But they had their whole body massaged. And guess what? They had them, their body massaged with, um, not with olive oil, but with crocodile oil. And, well, the crocodile is one of the holy um, animals for them. They probably boiled them after, the, or, they, or they did a lot of funny things, you know, boiling them and uh, making, uh, uh, mummifying them and all sort of things going on there. So they probably boiled them and they had an oil, which is the, the crocodile oil, the croc oil. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so the word for crocodile in pharaonic or demotic is mushat which is, you only write the consonants, which is M-S-S-H. Well, this is Messiah. So the word Messiah or Christ actually means a crocodile. Mm. <laughs> and, well, it, it, I mean, the bloke is a bit like a crocodile. Maybe he was a good man, but uh, the thing he brought here, which is, is not very good, because, mm. actually, uh, Christ is Horus. That's why in all churches you see I-H-S, which is Isis, Horus, and Seth, or Seth, Sethon, which is Satan, of course. And Sethon, he is actually the, the Lord, the Pharaonic Lord of the underworld, of the, uh, um, yeah, of, of, of darkness, the, uh, the Lord of darkness. The god of darkness is Seth. So this is Isis, also the represented. Is it represented in the triangle? Yes, it is. Yeah, the side of the pyramid is, and it uh, it symbolizes the number three: Isis, Horus, and Seth. And underneath uh, of a pyramid, it's a um, it's a number four, which is fire, earth, water, and um, Fire and, and air. So three and four together makes the number seven. That's why the number seven is quite a holy number for them. 
And uh, Isis, she was pregnant with Osiris, her, her man, her husband. And um, Seth, the Lord, or Satan, the Sethon, the, uh, the, the Lord of the underworld of darkness, he told Isis, well, listen, Isis, um, you know, we have jackals and wolves and we make dogs out of them, you know, like, but we have to kill the elder dogs, the parents. If we only need the puppies. And from a puppy, we can raise them from scratch and uh, make a dog out of them because there's no more uh, daddy wolf and, and mama wolf, and uh, we raise them. And you can do the same with mankind, with your son, with Horace. At first, well, she didn't want to do this, and finally... This is also the story of Eve, actually, the snake talking to Eve. And finally, mm. she agreed. And uh, so they killed Osiris. Sethon did. It's written that he's a, he, he is his brother, but that's how he presented him as a brother and then, you know, stabbed him in the back. And then they, um, they scattered his body all over the Nile in 13 parts. That's why the number 13 is so important for Freemasons. That's why the Yanks, they have, they have 13 stripes in their flag. That's why number 13 is so important. And, um, yeah, so then she, after having killed Osiris, then she went to the River Nile alone, and she gave birth to her son Horus, and they raised Horus uh, from scratch like a sheeple like an obedient slave, you know, like go and do the war there, kill some people there or some Arabs here and, you know, be obedient and we'll give you everything, but you have to obey to us. You know, and then this, this is how the, how the whole sheep of things started off. And this is the reason of all these wars we've been having. I call it the Horus Matrix. It means we kill the fathers in all those wars and they can never tell their sons, like, listen, son, you know, life is about this and about this. And, you know, uh, don't do this and I'll protect you. You have to listen to me. There are certain rules and um, um, these things are dangerous and this is not very, um, you know, very good for you. All these things fathers used to say to their sons, you know, like, uh, don't take drugs or don't drink, you know, and don't become a queer, things like this. Well, it, it doesn't exist anymore. You're not even allowed to raise your kids. Otherwise, the police will come and, and or the, the SS, the social s services, and take the children away. Well, I mean, the children, they don't even belong to us. They're not our property. They're the property of the state. And that's why we have a number, you know, with a passport, uh, a passport with a number on it. And every time they ask you for it, they have to show you a number and everything. That means you belong to the state, to the king. Mm -hmm. These kings, actually, they never went away, the aristocracy. So the pharaohs, they became the aristocracy. And because that, at a certain that is... moment, uh, communism started off, and the Russians, they killed all the Tsars. Well, luckily they did, because they had the Russian people starved to death, millions of them. So the Russians, they, uh, they didn't accept it anymore, and they killed them, with the help of the Jews, apparently. And um, so... The, uh, the, the aristocracy, I mean, they had everything. The land, uh, the cattle, the women, uh, we belong to them, uh, you know, the food. They could take all the food they wanted. They could take our women through the Prime Noctus, which is the first rite, the, the first day of the uh, night of the marriage. They just took our women and said, well, you have to sleep with the Lord. And this is how they spread their genetics. So they never disappeared, and this is why they uh, started to uh, rule us from uh, secret Freemasonry lodges. So the pharaohs never disappeared. They disappeared in the sea of peoples. They became the aristocracy. They came from the sun, and they became the Freemasons. And this is the new world order. The old world order, that's the aristocracy and the pharaohs. That's the old world order. I mean, if you want to understand the new world order... You must look at what, what, what is the old world order, and that's the aristocracy, the kings. You know, and if you have a British passport, well, I mean, there's the, um, the British coat of arms of the royal house of, the, of, the, um, uh, of Buckingham Palace and all that, of the Windsors is on it, and the number. So that means you belong to them. You're their property, yeah? 
and they're still here. They never disappeared. And now they are, they are, they're very organized in Bilderberg and all this. And because the, uh, the aristocracy, actually, the kings, they wanted to be king forever. So they were having fights among each other, you know, and the, the king, he wanted to be the king forever. And there were more and more of these little pharaohs, you know, dukes and, and counts and, 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 and all this, you know. And, and uh, so they had wars, which we had to fight. Their big army is lying to us, you know. They say, well, he did something very wrong, you know, like he's having weapons of mass destruction and things like that in the Middle Ages, telling these things to us. So we wage war for them, you know. So after hundreds of years of wars between kings and, and, and other kings and, and all this, the dukes, they knew that they were, were not going getting any further like this. Every time the castle was destroyed, so they came up with a new system. And they said, well, now any of us can be the king for four years. And this is how democracy started up. And um, then they said, well, who's going to vote? And they said, well, we have the demos, the stupid people. Demos is people for Greek, or call them sheeple. We have these stupid sheeple, we're the demos, we have them vote. Ah, that's a good idea, they all said. So that's why, you know, if the president is being voted, he's happy as a king, you know, and he's like, he's having the, uh, he won the lotto or something. He's only thinking of himself. You can see that he's not thinking of us. He's only thinking of himself, you know, he's, he's very happy for joy and, you know. So this is the new system. This is the new world order. And the old world order, that's the, the order of the aristocracy. But they got afraid because of too many uprisings and revolutions, especially in Russia. Yeah, good old Russians, they do a good thing there. And that's why the Nazis, a counter movement, had to be uh, founded, and that was Nazism. And uh, that's why the Jews had to go, because they, um, they helped uh, with communism and uh, to have a decent life for the people. And uh, the aristocracy, they, w they are very, very much afraid of this. That's why they're hiding. That's why they murdered all the Jews, and etc., etc. And actually, the Nazism and communism, they were all defeated by the ex actual uh, way of ruling us through um, capitalism. I mean, capitalism, it, that's, that's really their way. I mean, that's the aristocracy. They have a lot of capital, you know. They own everything. So capitalism is their way. And Nazism and communism was just a uh, sort of a fraud, if you might call it like that. Yeah. So what you are saying is Egypt's uh, pharaohs uh, reproduct themselves through, um, through generations. Uh, the enemies from uh, within living in aristocratic houses and use all uh, in ancient symbols to identify and also to communicate between them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like I mean, so look. the Freem Freemason yeah, I mean, handshake and so on. Yeah, I mean, look at the Freemasons. They're all attracted to, to castles and having their secret meetings in castles and swords and old traditions and costumes. It's the aristocracy. I mean, they, they, you don't recognize them anymore. They don't have a castle anymore, you know, or only some of them. They might be living next door. I mean, there are also pharaohs who are not that rich, you know. But they all yeah. have this pulsion inside to be rich and to, to be someone. I, I met quite a couple of them. Uh, what's uh, interesting, I think a lot of people can imagine that uh, the aristocracy is, is like the, the Freemason and so on. But uh, how, how they became from the pharaohs, uh, that they became like the, the, the Freemason and uh, aristocratic uh, people around yeah. here, uh, living here, that that is something. Uh, can you explain that a little further? How how they reproduce themselves and control their uh, bloodline in a way uh, until? Uh, yeah, I until can tell today. you that. No problem. The pharaohs they always had a lot of slaves. You know, building the uh, the pyramids and all that. And um, first they got their slaves like uh, from around the um, ten kilometers in a circle. 
then all the slaves died very quickly. You know, there was malaria. They didn't have very much to eat. Very hard work the whole day. Just like in a concentration camp. I mean, the whole idea of a concentration camp is very pharaonic, as the constant, you know. And um, so then they had to get the slave like in a perimeter of 20 kilometers, and they were all dead, and then 100 kilometers, and they had to go further and further and further because there were no more, no more slaves. And then they, they had to go so long with caravans or, or get them by ship, you know, with, or with camels, the ship of the desert, if you like. And they even, half of them, they, they were already dead before they came to the uh, construction site of the pyramids. Like, so there, there were no more slaves to get nowhere. And so they finally said, well, we're not going to get the slaves anymore to us but we are going to the slaves. But the slaves in Europe, they didn't know this uh, uh, at, at this moment yet. So they first they went to Iran and Persia, they took it over, and then they went to Greece and Rome, then they went to, to the north and France, uh, there was the, the, the Gallic Wars, they killed all the, all the Celts in France, they had to escape to, to Brittany. And uh, finally, they came to England, they came to Germany, they came to all over. So this is how the pharaohs, they came all over. And as I told you, because the, uh, there were the second and third sons who didn't have anything, so these guys, they finally came up, they, they were like young rebels within the uh, aristocracy. And this is why the king of France, Philippe le Bel, the beautiful Philip, as he called himself probably, <laughs> They always have a high esteem of themselves, you know. <laughs> I mean, look at Obama and all our presidents. What an esteem they have of, them, of themselves, you know. They take them yeah, so they, seriously. Yeah, they, you know. yeah so they, they came with the idea of uh, everybody had a chance within the, the community, within the family or the house. As the word pharaoh is coming from per a, which means the, uh, the big house. Per is the house. Uh, per a, it's, it's, it's uh, etymologically where the word pharaoh is uh, deriving from. So, um, yeah, they came up with this uh, new idea, and the king of France, he didn't stay the king. He didn't want to leave his palace. So this is why he um, he burned a couple of uh, Freemasons, but most of them. Uh, uh, Templars, sorry, but most of them already escaped to uh, to Switzerland, and uh, which is octagon. I'll tell you about that later. The uh, secret code for Switzerland is octagon. So um, after that, the uh, the Templars they revenge on the on the French king, and he finally um, uh, he finally had his head chopped off together with uh, with his wife and. And this is what happened to most of the kings who uh, in Europe who didn't want to. Um, when when was that? To this new idea and the new world order of democracy and Freemasonry. That when was that? That everyone has a chance to be the king for four years or five years. Sean, uh, when when was that? When the the king at uh, the in, in France? Oh, that was the French Revolution. Yeah, and okay. do you know that uh, 18, the French Revolution century. is? French Revolution was uh, like 13 years after creation of the Illuminatis. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah, 13 years century. after the French Revolution. And they created also the first um, uh, fundamental ri uh, rights, uh, human rights, or how they call it. And there on, you see, it's like uh, done uh, uh, pour les représentants du peuple François. And François, the people du François, is the, like the war warlords of uh, uh, of France in this time. So the even the human rights uh, who are created after the French Revolution are only for for the for the the, the, the warlords. It's not for the people. It's for oh. only for the. Yeah, sure. 
That's mm. right. It's uh, ex exactly here you can see it. If it's 13 years after the end of the French king and, and after the old world order, the Illuminati came and the Freemasons, it's not only the Illuminati. The Illuminati is just a name for one of their lodges, which, uh, which was founded in another part of the world on a, at another moment in history. But um, it was the, um, uh, the lodge of uh, Les Neuf Sœurs, the Nine Sisters. They were the ones who really got the, uh, the French monarchy on their knees and uh, had their head, heads chopped off. And it's funny if it's only if it's 13 years. Again, the number 13. As uh, Osiris, he was chopped into uh, uh, 13 parts, and uh, which they uh, probably also did with uh, John F. Kennedy. And John F. Kennedy, he was murdered at Dealey Plaza in Dallas. And Dealey, Arthur Dealey, was a high-grade Freemason, a 33-degree Freemason. And this is an open temple. And um, there is a, a, an obelisk exactly there where they, uh, where they got rid of uh, JFK. And the obelisk has 13 parts, just like Osiris. So I think they probably cut... Uh, JFK into 13 parts as well. Uh, like Lady Di? Yeah, Lady Di is it's the same thing, Diana. Uh, there's not many people who know how she got murdered. But she, they, they, they killed her with the, a thing which is called the Boston Brakes. Uh, the Mercedes, the S class, was, um, uh, it was stolen a couple of weeks before. And then they st in Paris of the, uh, the the hotel, the Ritz Hotel, where she was staying. And um, then they suddenly found it again. Uh, the Mercedes was there. The keys were in it. It was nice, polished, and everything, everything in order, nicely cleaned. And that's funny with a stolen car. It doesn't happen very much, right? So um, in the meantime, what did they do uh, with a big car like that? And nowadays, every car. It's not like a mini uh, mini Cooper, like a small car, like 40 years ago. Now all cars they have power steering, especially big Mercedes. You 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 can't steer steer the wheels, you know, just, just by with the force of your arms. You need a hydraulic system, and this hydraulic system is being monitored by an electronic little box in the uh, in the engine compartment, which monitors. As well, the uh, the braking system. Here we go to the, the Boston brakes and the accelerator. Well, everything. This is the um, the brain of the car, and this is what they do. What they did is uh, they they took away the electronic box and they um, they managed to put a remote remote control system in it. So the guy who was following Lady Di, the guy in the white Fiat Uno, he was sitting with his uh, with his um, how do you call it? The game, like uh, you know, just remote just, control. Yeah, with the just like a kid Basic. with the, with the, with his electronic games playing. Yeah, with a remote control, and they steered her exactly on the thirteenth pillar. We got the number thirteen again. They probably cut her as well into thirteen pieces. They did. And then they took two hours to bring her to the hospital. As the nearest hospital, which is uh, L'Hôpital d'Alma, like she was killed in uh, Le Pont d'Alma. And uh, L'Hôpital d'Alma, it's only, it's only 15 seconds away by car. It's, it's just around the corner where they have everything. Uh, a very specialized hospital where they could have saved them. But she was probably brought to a place, uh, I showed in one of my movies, which is an octagonal shape, and there's also an obelisk uh, on Place de la Concorde, which is very near. And among pharaohs, they have to be sacrificed on an obelisk, as they did with JFK. They have their little traditions, the little filthy traditions, you know, like the things they do with kids, uh, satanic traditions, you know. And then they smile to us and they say, oh, yeah, we're so clean and we have human rights. You know, at the meantime, they have these filthy traditions going on. So actually, the Pont d'Alma, where they murdered her, Alma in Italian, it means the soul. So Lady Diana, she was killed on the, um, uh, the Mercedes, smashed into the 13th pillar in the tunnel of souls. You know, 
they all have their little filthy things going on, yeah? So Boston Brakes, well, I mean, all the MI5, the MI6, all these secret services, they use these things. They all use the Boston Brakes. Uh, uh, there were a lot of witnesses, you know, from 9-11 and um, uh, the uh, Dutroux uh, child molester case in Belgium. There were, in the, in the Dutroux case, I think there were um, 18 witnesses who, who disappeared. They got funny Boston Brakes accident, accidents. They, they, they smashed into a tree and they all died mysteriously. And there's not, almost not a word about it in the, in the mainstream media. Or like you say, also they suicide them. Yeah, so there's a lot of people who get suicided. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, there was this Austrian guy. Uh, his name is uh, was Wolfgang Umfogel. That was in October 2010. That was when they. Um, this this story is related together with my films that they send me a terrorist court. I don't say an anti-terrorist court. I say a terrorist court of the Swiss Nazi police, of Octagon, the Templars. They put three guns in my head, a bandage over my eyes, like in a CIA rendition. So, okay, this is Wolfgang Umfogel in October 2010. Uh, he wanted to sell uh, banking CDs about uh, tax evasion havens and the names of people and, and the amount of money here in uh, the tax evasion here in Switzerland. I'm not Swiss, by the way, I'm South African. And, uh, yeah, so these, the Swiss Secret Service, they, they snatched him, and within two weeks' time only, he got suicided in a Swiss uh, torture detention center. And as I know, by what, by what sort of torture, which is the code O2T, They torture immigrants here in Switzerland, so I contacted the biggest Austrian newspaper, which is called Die Kronenzeitung, and uh, they wrote an article uh, about that, and they, they wrote my name in it, which unfortunately the Swiss Secret Service and their terrorist squad and their Nazis, they read it as well, and... Um, They, this is the first time in history they used the name uh, or code OTT torture. And they even wrote, this is the biggest newspaper in Austria, which is read by six or seven million people. And they also wrote that the man had been suicided. Now, this is really very rare. They write a thing like this in a, in a very big national uh, newspaper. So they wrote my name and that bloke was, he had been suicided. And, uh, I mean, they, they had it look like a suicide, you know. So when they read it, they, um, first they, they, they tried to, um, to hang me something on. We got arrested by a cop. And, um, that was a couple of months later after it appeared in the newspaper. And this cop went into the car. When he came out, he just said, oh, you're going to have a, a complaint. You have to appear for justice for threatening me. I didn't do anything like that. I was with my kids and all. I shook his hand. I say, yes, sir, Mr. Police Officer, you know? He just lied. The Swiss are such a bunch of liars. It's incredible. And then they say, we are so clean and neutral. He just lied, you know, to hang me something on. Then a month later, I got, uh, they, they really did it, you know? Uh, after this cop was 20 minutes in the car, he came out and he said, well, you're going to have to appear for court for threatening me. Just out of the blue. I didn't do anything. I'm not the kind of type of person doing these things. I don't do these things. Uh, especially not in front of my kids and my, my, my family. A month later, I got all the papers of the Swiss Nazi Justice Department in Bern, Octogon, Switzerland, And they, um, so, um, Riva, mach nicht so, Riva, nicht so krach machen. Excuse me. And, um, yeah, well, I, I got, I got all the, the things of the, uh, of, of the Justice Department, uh, really, as he said, well, I had to appear for court for a, a complete 
or the entirely lied it together. Then another month later, I, I, I heard on the radio, I was in a supermarket, and I heard a cop got shot. So I, I knew it was my cop, and it was my cop. He was shot for his aggressiveness, for his corruption, for his lies, for his Nazi behavior. He got shot by another Swiss. So this was a very dangerous policeman, very dangerous man. And thank God for me and my family, he's not there anymore. So he can't harm us anymore, but they have other ones. So then I wrote a very cynical letter to the Justice Department and the Nazi police here in Switzerland um, that uh, their, their nice corrupt cop was still alive on YouTube because he hit me as well, and I filmed it. And um, so, well, because he hit me, I, yeah, well, yeah, so I filmed it. And then three days later, they sent me the, uh, the terrorist squad. They put me three guns on my head, a bandage over my eyes, handcuffs, foot cuffs, masked men all over. They were hooded, a lot of things to hide, probably. There were shouts and threats. Now I'm having murder threats by the Swiss Nazi police and the Swiss Nazi Justice Department. So for the last two years, I can't even get out of the house alone anymore. So sometimes for weeks, I don't get out of here. But thank God I've got YouTube and I have my social contacts on YouTube. I make my videos. So do look, do watch The Pharaoh Show and uh, Octagon, The Empire of Darkness. And my last video is called Pharisocracy with PH, Fer like aristocracy, but with a PH of the pharaohs in front of it. Riemann, jetzt muss aufhören. Excuse me, my kids are very loud. They don't respect it that I'm here on the radio. Yeah, but well, they speak German, so I... Can, can, can you talk um, uh, about octagon and uh, also the cake structure you have uh, discovered? And, uh, yeah. of course, uh, KKK. Yeah, very good question, uh, Jabba. Well, the KKK, uh, well, first, the, um, the octagon form. If you take the Swiss cross or a Templar's cross, I mean, it's very obvious that the Swiss cross, it is from a Templar's cross. It's a bit simplified, but it's even the same colors. And then they got the red cross, you know, like the uh, Johanniter Orden, like from the, uh, the Crusades as well. And um, if you draw a line around the Swiss cross or a Templar's cross, it's the same, actually. You get an octagonal shape, and this is called Octogon, which is the, the code name of uh, the Nazi Templars of Switzerland. And uh, these Templars, they became, in fact, the knights of the Middle Ages, and our, our rulers, our lords and kings, they had these knights, you know. They were the, they were the robbers as well. So with them being the robbers, they, um, they had a good reason for us to accept uh, a police, you know, uh, ruling us and, and, and harassing us and give me your papers and everything. It's the same with 9-11, you know, they, they, with all these sort of lies, they, they, they give us more, uh, more laws and more restrictions, le less and less liberties. Oh. Oh, off. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's octagon, and that's why if you look at the badge of a, um, of a Bobby policeman in England, well, there's an octagon on the Bobby helmet and on his chest. It's an octagon symbol. Even the queen, the queen has it sometimes, octagon, because this is the, the new, this, this is really the symbol of the new world order and the Templars. Octogon is. And that's why I call my film uh, Octogon, the Empire of Darkness. And there's a lot of proofs in it. And the Swiss, yeah, about the KKK, I mean, they're real racist here. This is like being in, 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 in pre-war Germany, like in the 30s. Everywhere they show immigrants and other races as black sheep and black cross and serpents and... and, and I, it's really horrible. It's, it's unbelievable. In the streets, in magazines, on TV, uh, like they, they, the Swiss, they feel themselves as the um, uh, the Herrenrasse, you know, the uh, more than all the other races, you know. 
And um, so there's a lot of Germans and Swiss as well who emigrated to the United States, and they went mostly to the southern states, uh, the, the so-called redneck states. And there there was a thing being founded. Uh, it's called the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, which doesn't have any meaning in English. I mean, clan, yeah, we understand the clan, that's a tribe, yeah? But what's a Ku Klux? What the hell is a Ku Klux? I never heard this word in English. Well, I tell you, it's German. It's Swiss German. The word Ku, it comes from the German word Ku. It means a cow. And clocks come from the German word Glocke, the bells. So what is this cowbell clan then? Well, you know, maybe that every cow in Switzerland has a bell around the neck, which is a pain for the poor animal. All the time it's like uh, sounding and ringing, you know. But the farmer knows at any moment, where is my cow? What is my cow doing? Like the Ku Klux Klan, in other words, where's the damn nigger and what's he doing? Excuse me for my expression, my black brothers, because I don't think like this. I just want to point out how the Swiss think. So it became the, uh, the KKK. Um, actually, the, the word Glocke, you, you write it with a G, but it sounds almost like a K, but to match it like KKK, they um, um, camouflaged it. And there is, in fact, um, so, the, so the, these cowbells actually is a very Machiavellic system. They even have prisons here, which I was in a prison for a long time. I'm not a criminal. I didn't do anything wrong, uh, which is called the Shella Metli. And Shella, it means making a sound. And Metli, that's the meadow. Metli, meadow, it's almost the same, yeah. So this is another word for the KKK, uh, well, it's a, or the cowbells, shall I medley. So that's a very nice Machiavellic name for a prison, isn't it? They know at any moment what are the prisoners doing and where are they? You know? And then they say, oh, we are so clean and we are Swiss, you know. Oh, no, we don't take any tax evasion. No, 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 nothing of the kind. And in the Swiss Parliament, actually, they have the KKK as a, uh, as a logo, as a motto in the Parliament, like the French, they have Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. They have the KKK, which is Consens, Concordance, Compromise, Compromise, Concordance, and Consensus, which is in Swiss or in German is written with a K. So that matches up to the KKK. And on top, in fact, in the, uh, in the Swiss Parliament, they have the motto of the Freemasons and the Templars. It says in Latin, one for all and all for one. Like in the, three, the, the movie of the Three Musketeers of, uh, uh, what was his name again, this French writer? Uh, I, I don't remember his name. Uh, Alexandre Dumas. And Alexandre Dumas, he was also the, uh, the favorite uh, author of the French president, François Mitterrand, who was a Freemason as well. And he had the glass pyramid uh, erected um, in front of the Louvre uh, uh, Museum in Paris. So that all matches together nicely. I think in uh, One for All and All for One in Latin, it's... Uh, uh, no, I, I don't remember the, the, I have to write it down, the Latin saying, something with the uh, unus, uh, one for all and all for one. Yeah, well, it, it's, I, I filmed it and I put it in some of my videos. Yeah. So the Swiss are deep into it. They're really deep into it. I mean, look at how Prince Charles, he goes skiing here. All these, I mean, they attract the rich people, like in Britain or in, in, in any state of the world. In a low-tax community, like uh, Roger Moore, he's in Stad, or he was in Stad, you know, well, Simon the Templar, you know, you know why he's Simon the Templar in Switzerland, founded mm -hmm. by the Templars, Octoron, you know, eh? so <laughs> Roger Moore, he's Simon the Templar, and um, <clears throat> so, they, uh, I mean, they attract the richest people who don't pay any more taxes of money that was worked for, like in Great Britain or in England, but it's not being taxed in England. So there's a lot of money disappearing. I mean, the nobility never paid any taxes anyway, and they're still doing it through Switzerland. So that means taxes have to be paid, and it's all coming at the backs of the poor people, 
and the poor are getting poorer and the rich people are getting richer. Well, this is Switzerland doing. And this mm. whole affair with Edward Snowden is very much connected to it. Because he yeah, was can you explain what uh, Edward Snowden mean? Yeah, um, there, there's an encoded message in Ed War, Edward Snow, now, you know, snow, snow, Edward Snowden. It says war now, and he had this um, this uh, username which was called the, the true Hua, and Hua is like in the American Army or the uh, the tough U.S. Rangers. They say like uh, yes sir, no sir. They say Hua, so that means the true Hua, or it means war now. Hua, yes sir, execute sir. War is going to be now. So this is an encoded message in it. Maybe, mm. maybe the bloke's name isn't even Edward Snowden. He's far too smooth, very smooth talker for a 29-year-old kid. And, uh, I mean, he was already 23 when he had his assignment. I mean, a, uh, the, the CIA doesn't, doesn't put a 23-year-old kid on, a, on an important assignment. You know, they take older people, not young ones like that. So the whole the whole thing is to stop the CIA from putting their noses too deep into uh, Swiss bank accounts, you know, and then where the financial elite is having their money stashed. That's what the Edward Snowden case is all about, to mm. stop the CIA. Because I think there, are, there, are, there probably are some good yanks in there, a handful of good CIA guys. Not very many, not very many. But there probably are some who believe like in the... Uh, in the values of, of the USA, mm. and they have to be stopped. So that's why Mr. Edward Snowden. Uh, we have uh, a psyop. We have three minutes left uh, before the hour. I don't know if uh, you you are willing to make a little over the hour. Uh, we will just go into a break. But before the break, uh, you, you discover a pyramid in France. And what you mainly is saying is that Egypt is still in present time, and um, we we um, we just have to open the eyes to so some different stuff. And I can definitely say that the Pharaoh show or uh, Octagon, uh, uh, sorry, what is the title? Octagon, the of evil, the darkness of yeah, evil. Octagon, the Empire of Evil. Yeah, Empire of Evil. But um, we have two minutes left for a little before a little song, and then we can maybe continue half an hour if some people have some questions also. Uh, if you're okay with that, Sean. Well, no, no, job. I have to. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here with the kids. I have to look That's after. That's no them. problem. And it's, it's getting late. It's getting later, so they're getting a bit uh, <laughs> grumpy, uh, restless, <laughs> as you know, with kids. You know, so no I, problem. I really have to. Um, I, I luckily have my wife around that she take care of the noisy kids. Uh, but yeah. thank you so much for being on, uh, on, the, on, on the radio. Uh, I definitely would suggest to the people to, to uh, watch the videos of uh, Sean, uh, different discovery of pyramids, also walking through uh, discovering some walls in, in the forest. Um, all the different very interesting stuff. Uh, I wonder my, uh, almost my whole life what was wrong with Switzerland. Until I discover uh, uh, the, the videos of Sean. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show, and uh, we talk very soon. Take care of yourself and your family, and we talk very soon. Be decoded. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Jabba. It's good to know you, bro. Booyaka. Thank you. Argument, you know, for the war mongers. I have to channel. I have to channel the spirit. Everybody just keep it going.